kid in school or at a camp, man, that's gone. So I know you guys are looking to, to make it right and make good decisions for your program. So I know for everything I hear is you guys are doing a ton of work. Yeah, well, that's and just trying to find the right fit too, because everyone has the right type of kid that they want, and you know, then it then it goes back to your relationships. So, like you talk about it on the podcast a lot, like who do you trust, your relationships, like those type of things, like get a recommendation on a kid because you don't want to pull the trigger on the wrong kid. Exactly, exactly. Well, it is noon here, coach, and I would love to stay and chat with you, and we'll definitely get you on the coach and coordinator podcast. You heard coach talking about it, and uh, if if you are new to that, haven't heard of it. Just follow me on Twitter at Coach K Grabowski. That's G-R-A-B-O-W-S-K-I. If you need that again, just put a a question in here and I'll type it in for you. Uh, But I appreciate Coach Hyatt joining us today. Uh, He's at Shepherd University. These guys have done an outstanding job um, all across the board in their program. Uh, Coach does an excellent job on offense, and we're excited to have him here today. So, Coach, thanks for taking the time, and I will turn it over to you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Keith. Um, And guys, what I'll do right here, um, so some of the things that we're going to talk about today, um, specifically in the pass game, kind of how we stretch the field, um, you know, horizontally, um, you know, sideline to sideline, and then kind of stretch it, how we kind of push the ball down the field. Um, And to kind of understand where we come from, we're we're an 11 personnel based team. um, and, And really what we try and do is that we try to be very efficient every time that we're throwing the football. Um, and we want to be really high percentage um, completion, you know, when we're throwing it. Um, and the other thing, too, is that we want to try and be able to get our kids into space and allow them to make plays. Um, so hopefully this comes up right here um, so that everyone can see the screen. Um, but as we get into it, there's three concepts that I really wanted to get into today um, with the kind of what we do. Uh, and these are some of our just first couple days install and what we really try and do, and I'll talk a little bit how we progress through the season to try and to disguise a couple things. Um, the first one that is a very base install for us is our drive concept. Um, and this is something right here um, for us that we really feel is a great way to, to space the field again. So kind of starting more on a, uh, on a horizontal stretch of how we can displace the defense. Um, when we install this, this is a base two by two install for us. Um, And so kind of talk you guys through with some of the things that we do here uh, within our concept. What I'd really like to start with is is how we attack the drive side of the field. Um, So ideally for us, when we run this, you know, we're like I said, we're a heavy 11 personnel team. Um, And then, you know, the next thing for us is like 12 and 21 personnel. So we like to have things that we can carry within the offense that we feel that potentially like a second tight end fullback potentially. Um, could run these concepts and so when we do this um, we feel like that's a great route for those that second tight end type player to run this underneath route and so when we install this out of 11 personnel um, you know so with our number one receiver right here what we're going to do is it with this alignment we want him to be aligned four and a half yards away from the second receiver Um, now we do have a couple rule breakers with with how we do this but this right here is just with what we've studied um, we really want our drive route right here to be four and a half yards aligned away from the number two receiver. Um, and my suggestion would be that if you do start to stack these receivers, and we'll kind of get into that, um, but the closer that these two receivers get, the wider this release has to be on that square end, and we'll get to that. When we run that drive route, um, ideally we want this man to be right off of the backside right here of this number two receiver. And um, what we teach our drive man is that we want him to run through the heels of the defensive lineman and that he wants to be, um, by the time he gets to the opposite tackle, he wants to be at three yards. Um, that's where he wants to be. And then as soon as he gets here, you know, that's where we're reading across the field um, with this alley defender. You know, whether it's a post safety look, too high safety look, we want to read that alley hybrid spur, strong safety type player to see if it's man or zone to understand whether I'm throttling in a window um, or right here if I'm just going to stay on the move. The next part that we get into with the drive concept is now we get into um, the square in, right, with number two. And so like I was saying, if you do start to get into stack these receivers right here, right, however you do it, you know, if these receivers start to get stacked, I really believe that you've got to widen that square in um, just to create more space right here as he's working across. And what we really teach with our square in, um, like right here, like you can see, you know, like right here, this is a perfect line. 
the one thing I would say through like all of these concepts right here is that, you know, we're really big on not running paper routes. Um, that's a big thing for us here just for the fact of, you know, on this drawing, everything looks great. Uh, the square in, everything looks perfect running across. Um, but really, you have to move stem, stack defenders, do those type things. And on this route right here, especially any, anything in breaking here, we really want this to be a flat to negative um, uh, angle right here because, you know, what we're going to have here is we're going to have defensive backs that are going to be driving down on the ball, uh, all those type of things. And so we really want to make sure that we're coming out of this thing flat to negative, and we want to be working towards the center, um, towards the center of the football where that ball was snapped so that we're building the tarp, top piece of this triangle. Now, what we do with our tailback, um, you know, is that we start to teach it where we're going to have him align to the drive side, where now he is going to come in protection, um, and we want him to help funnel this defensive end, you know, when he does release back into our tackle. Um, just like a lot of people, I'm sure that you see a lot of great edge players right here. And so one of the things here is that we really want to force that defensive end as soon as we check our protection and to me, it doesn't matter if you like mic it, slide it, whatever the case may be. But as soon as he releases, help him force this edge player back into the tackle to then get a three by three split off of an inline tight end right here to build the bottom piece of the triangle. Um, with us, you know, and again, it really depends. Like if you start to have more of an open set here, we tell him to now be able to get three yards over where number two was aligned. Um, so again, you just kind of kind of play with that as you're building this. Um, but I think there's a lot of people here when they talk about the drive, you know, this is what we're looking at with this drive concept is that we're building a triangle right here to make it easier for our quarterback as we work the read and progression. Um, now, the thing that I would tell you um, with the other side of this concept, in my opinion, is that in order to make the drive concept go, um, this is the concept right here that you really need to influence what you want to bring on the other side of the drive. Um, and for example, right here, like when um, a couple years ago when I was at Frostburg State, um, very fortunate to be there to have pretty good runs, turn that program around. This concept right here was great for us where now we would, we would have our X receiver read this corner. If this corner was pressed, um, and most of the time this is through the field, if he was pressed, he would just turn this into a mandatory outside release. Um, if right here, if he was, a, if this corner was off, we would now turn this to an inside go where we wanted to get on the inside, turn right here, that shoulder, turn, get vertical over the top. What we would do now right here with our number two receiver is what we would put it on a fat out where now he would be able to get a stem right here on this alley player stack and make it look like a four vertical. But now at 12 to 14, he would then speed cut this and again, turning this thing flat to negative as we're working through the sideline. The thing that we started to do here at Shepard, um, is our quarterback, he feels very comfortable just throwing that speed out concept. Um, like a lot of you guys, you study Phil Longo, some of those guys, like they love this concept. Our quarterback throws it very well. So we started to put this um, with, our, uh, with our drive concept coming behind it. And again, whether, whether you run a speed out um, or you're running this little deeper, maybe like a sail type concept here, whatever the case is, in my opinion, it's all about controlling the weak side curl flat player whoever that may be it is all about controlling him um, because as soon as you dictate to the, to the defense you know that you force them to put three over two to now take this away on this side of the field now that's going to open up the rest of your drive concept um, and so now kind of getting into the quarterback a little bit for us this is a very simple concept um, you know this is a complete yes no um, and we have a couple different yes no's um, that we that we try to incorporate within our offense and basically for us a yes no um, what we tell the quarterbacks is if it's a day one freshman coming in we tell him if you have open space and you can get the completion take the completion um, like if you, you don't hesitate or anything I'm just going to right now I'm going to catch the football rocker and rip right that's fine let's take it if there is any gray area um, you know, so like we like to really put this with the inside zone because I think a lot of teams run that now. If there's any gray area, um, like if it's a if it's a give read or a pull read, for us when we talk inside zone, it's always a give, right? If it's gray, give. Same thing here in the pass game. We try to teach it. If there's any gray, if it's muddy at all with the read, it is a no. Um, because now as soon as we get off of the yes, no, that allows us to get into the to the progression post snap 
which for us is now drive basic back. Um, and that's something that we really try to just go over with our players, uh, with our quarterbacks over and over and over again. You know, when we think of drive, we think yes, no. If it's a no, drive basic back, drive basic back. Um, and we try to keep it as simple as that with our quarterbacks and obviously let them rep through the concepts and then they can start to see the picture, right? So right here, as we start to get into this, right? So now kind of jumping right into it, one of the things here, right, is we've got this stack look right here, the receivers So right here. We're bringing the drive concept right here from the boundary, okay? This is just a simple look right here of just taking that easy access right here on the speed out, right? Again, with our quarterback, he's coming to the line of scrimmage. The first thing he's looking at is yes, no, right? Yes, no, yes, no. Do I have it? If I do, let's great and get it out into space. And the thing I would tell you, um, especially, you know, with the quarterbacks, I think nowadays, um, a lot of the quarterbacks feel really good um, throwing, throwing the football from the hash out. You know, I think that's a big thing that um, so many people now are doing things out on the perimeter. And I think one of the reasons why is the fact that kids really feel comfortable throwing the ball out on the perimeter. So anything that you can do to help that quarterback feel comfortable um, to get that ball on the edge, I think is a win uh, within your offense, in my opinion. The other thing um, that's really good with this concept is, and you can see we're bringing the driver out right here from the boundary. The one thing that's great with this concept is that, you know, you have hot answers um, on both sides of the field, right? So you have a hot answer here where you can win on the speed out, get that ball in and out of your hands. You also have a good hot answer right here is that drive route's working across where now he's going to catch it on the move, right? Which because if you're starting to get more pressure, like right here, you know, we're seeing a, we're seeing a seven man pressure, six man pressure with the plug. So right here, now, you know, that it would be going on the move, but it, but this is really good if you're starting to see teams that are going to bring that pressure. Right. Again, now we start to motion that receiver in. Um, again, because the whole point right here is that we want to get that good relationship between the drive, you know, the square in, and now the tailback building that last part of the triangle. Right. But it, as with this right here, we say yes, no. Do we have the yes, no? Right. Right now, the quarterback's thinking, yes, I have the yes, no. Now, with us, like we want to teach that we have a rocker just to make sure that post snap we see exactly what that corner is going to be doing. Um, but again, like this is a simple part of the concept where right here we can just allow, allow the quarterback, if he sees green space, let's take the space. Right. And anything where we can do, like our mindset is anything where we can do to get five plus yards, we're going to do it and then let our skilled players try and take care of the rest. Right, but you can see here, right, right here now from the boundary, this is where we'd be bringing that drive concept, right, to be able to build those levels. Right, so now as we motion this receiver in, right, again, so now because within the concept, and again, this is a very base concept for us, so we run this a lot of different ways, right, this is the picture that we want. We want the defense to now to be able to lock up, right, with having to move a safety over the top because now this is the triangle, this is the picture that we want to open up the rest of the drive concept. Right, so as we work here, you know, so showing you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly, like right here, I think our, our drive receiver could have been a little bit more shallow to help get to that space just a little bit earlier. Right? But as you can see, like he catches it, does a nice job of just getting up the field, getting vertical and puncturing the defense. But now right here from the tight picture, you can see the triangle that we're trying to build. This is a pretty good shot of this. Right? Where now he's able to, to help build this. Right? And now we've got everyone being able to work to the specific area where they are, where now we can really get a good horizontal stretch right there on the defense. Right. So here's a couple other variations of this that you can do. So, you know, in my opinion too, whatever your base plays are, just having, you know, just one, maybe two answers off of that play to keep people honest. So now what we do here is that we actually put the number two receiver on that drive route and allow the number one receiver to run the square in. 
right? So same thing, right? We want to control this side of the field. The defense has now locked this up with a post safety, right? So we're we should get an outside release here, right? With that fat out by number two, which then obviously clears it up right here for the quarterback being able to work across where now we put the, the tight end right here on that drive route, the square in, and now being able to put the back out into space. And again, we end up shifting to this right here, right? This is also a really good concept, right? Like if you have defensive ends that maybe are really good at getting off the ball, right? Just getting away right here to be able to chip, chip on a player and then be able to get him out in space. Right, but again, this is a this is a third and five call right here. You know, and again for us, this is a way where we feel like we can just get those players into space, working across on the drive route, right? Get vertical and get a first down. Right, so again, pre-snap with the quarterback, he's looking at the yes no. Okay. Again, we're starting to get this look right here. Safety over the top, right? Two over two right here to the field. That's perfect for us. Right, because now we really want to stretch the defense. Right, and this is a good picture here where now we really want to stretch it sideline to sideline. With that speed out concept or that deeper out concept, now we're really able to stretch, you know, that defense sideline to sideline and force them to cover every single, every single piece of grass. And again, as the quarterback drops back, he's looking yes, no. He doesn't have it. Now he's automatically working drive to the basic to the back. Working across basic, you know, and the one thing that we really work on right here is just being able to understand just to get north and south. Okay, so again, now we kind of get back to the stack look here, right? Where now, you know, I think this is a great way, like let's say that, you know, you have a maybe an X receiver or someone else that you really want to get in the picture. I think this is a great way where if you're starting to get a lot of post safety looks, um, and when I'm talking post safety, just a one high, maybe press man, all those type things, just being able to stack these receivers, move defensive backs off their landmarks just a little bit, um, is a great way to get people in space and again be able to just hit your base concepts All right so here's a good look right here from the tight again as we work back we got the drive route okay as soon as we see defenders beginning to drive right here right be able to break on this drive route we're immediately looking down right here to that square in right here to be able to help create space now, one of the other things, too, and I should have added these on, you know, one of the things that you can do here off of this concept, you know, like maybe it's a first and 10, um, you know, maybe it's a potential shot play. I think one of the good ideas that I've seen lately is that now you can just wheel this back out here. So potentially you can hit the drive route to the square in to the wheel with the tailback, um, especially if you can isolate that tailback potentially on a wheel linebacker. Um, you know, if, that, if that's a good physical matchup for you, I think that that might be a good shot play just to build off of a, just a base concept. All right, again, so now we motion it in, okay? This time, again, we've set the tight end right here on the drive, bring the number one receiver right here on the basic, right? He runs that square in, working flat to negative, Right, it's a good picture right here again from the tight shot. Right, and all this is right here is just a subtle adjustment on who's going to be working across on the drive concept. Right, and this is why we drill it so much with the quarterbacks as far as drive basic back. Right, because now, right, when teams really, you know, this is, again, like that picture that we talk about, the reason that we take the easy access space is to really force, 
you know, force a safety, that alley player to get out and cover this into space. Well, now, as soon as we get that, you know, the more that we run this concept, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of linebackers, that second level player is going to get nosy on the drive concept on the square and coming across. Right? And now you get an opportunity to get the back out in space, which is then the third part of that triangle that we just really hammer home with, with our quarterbacks is that when we drive back, right, we're looking at the drive concept to the square end, now to the tailback. Right, and like I said, like this is also something that we're gonna hit out of our 12 or 21 personnel sets here, right? So again, you can do this where you send your second tight end across on the drive or maybe potentially the, the end line tight end right here with his hand down, move him across. Again, though, this is all the same, um, all the same thing right here, right? Where again, you're just keeping it simple for your kid, drive to the square end to the back, right? In this game right here, this is actually at Urbana University. Um, just want to say very sorry for those guys with what's going on with with those coaches, Coach Haynes, very good guy. Um, and all their players. So anyone listening, if you're able to help those kids out, help those coaches out, please do so. Very unfortunate. All right, here's a, here's a good tight shot here. All right, but again, we're, we're building that same triangle, right? building that same triangle, just different personnel set, still attacking the same spots on the field. Okay. So now kind of getting into the next phase of, of again, like where we're going to be stretching the field um, horizontally, but now uh, the cross series, and I think a lot of people probably run this concept. Um, the one thing that we do with our cross here, um, and I think we, we run it a couple different ways as far as how we're going to attack everything into the boundary. Um, you know, the one thing that, that we really like with this play is that, again, this has – this has a lot of pieces built within it um, where we can really control the defense and we can work sideline to sideline. There's also that potential here where we can push this, out, push this thing vertical over the top. Um, and that's, that's something that we really, really like um, just how it's built in. So kind of that drive concept is more of a sideline to sideline. This is, again, sideline to sideline with more of a potential here where we can push the thing and be explosive um, over top of the defense. Now, what we do here at Shepherd um, is that we have two different ways that we run this, um, and I'll kind of go over both of those of what we like to do right here to the boundary. Um, what we'll do here is that with this picture here, what we'll do is that we'll send our number one receiver. Um, we'll put him on a mandatory outside release. Um, very similar, I think, that as everyone just runs that concept, is that you want to be able to push outside technique on that corner. Um, we really try and stress with him to be able to stack that defender and carry it down the field. Um, but we want him to be able to stem right here, stick, stack, and then get over the top. What we'll do here now is with our number two receiver. So like I said, we're a heavy 11 personnel team. Um, we'll run quite a bit of inline tight end concepts, um, run and pass. And what we'll do here is that we'll send him on a speed out on that four to six yard speed out. Um, we're now where we feel like we can show where we can show a vertical look here for the first five yards, and then he'll snap this out to be able to win that concept right here and whatever defender attaches to him. Um, the other thing that we do um, within the concept is, you know, if we ever push this tight end, um, if we push him out now, we're like, we will flex him out in more of an open two by two look. Um, we'll now run, I think, probably what is more uh, what a lot of people run nowadays as far as like with that spray fade, the numbers fade, slot fade. Um, what we'll do here is that we'll send him on the fade, right, where now we want to stem, be able to get vertical, and now we want to hold this route. Um, we tell him that we, he wants to be at the bottom of the numbers at 15 yards um, to hold at the bottom of the numbers to keep that window here potentially with a shot over the top. Um, and now we'll just do uh, that width hitch with a release right here by number one, where now we'll hit a five-step hitch. If, I, if it's zone, I've opened the space, I'm just going to sit. If that corner attaches to me, I'm going to now work down the line. Um, and so there's two different ways that we like to be able to hit that. Um, and really, it all comes down to, you know, for us, like how do we feel that we can really attack that weak safety? 
um, which I'll get to in here in a second. Working across now, um, you know, so as we work with the actual cross man, the one thing that we try really hard to do here at Shepherd is, um, you know, like we take uh, kind of like the old adage, you know, you want to be under the sand, over the mic. The one thing that we try to do um, is it's, it's kind of a little bit more like a four vertical concept on a bender where we want to stem um, on this stem cross. We want to stem, went inside on that, on that alley player, right? So whoever that is, and again, this is off of a too high look. We want to win inside, but now we want to carry it a little bit more vertical as we start to work across the field. Um, because for us, we, we really don't want this cross man to work across the football, right? We don't want this route to work to exactly all the way over to this week safety. Um, and again, probably like through a lot of us, like just trial and error. Um, you know, we used to run this concept and we would be under the sand over the mic. And this mic, like we see some pretty athletic mic linebackers they would be beating up the slot or, or if we did get across, we'd be getting all the way over here where now we're working our way to the read and it would just become a big mess. Um, and so for us, we really try to tell, we try to teach our players stem cross, get inside, get inside the alley player, work vertical, but now treat it more like a four vertical where bender, where now don't cross the football as you're working on this path. But now as you work that path, the ball will take you to open space. Um, and that was something that just really helped us as, as we were teaching the cross. The other thing that we do that's a little different um, is that we actually run a roll route on the perimeter um, instead of a post curl. So I know that a lot of people within this concept, they'll run, they'll run their, their post, they'll curl up, um, be able to work to that window. Um, again, you talk about just trial and error. Um, we actually had a player um, do it wrong in a practice where he just continued to roll um, through that area. And it actually opened up really nice and we completed the football and we changed it. So the reason that we did that um, is because most of the time with us, we always had this post curl and with our back, you know, we like to have just a little bit of a token fake um, right here in the back. And, you know, the reason we do that is we like to manipulate second level defenders, trying to help open up the cross and different things. Well, as soon as that tailback works across and then we help funnel that edge player back to the tackle, a lot of times we were having that post curl and the tailback be on top of each other in the same window. Um, and it was just frustrating, especially coaching the quarterbacks and trying to coordinate like, hey, here's our, here's our curl flat beater right here because they would be on the same level. Whoever this player was, whether it was an insert safety hybrid linebacker, whoever it was, they were right on top of each other and, you know, and so he could cover both and it was frustrating with us now with pushing this roll route onto this window. It just gave us an opportunity to hit this window here where now it was a true curl flat um, beater right here on the side where the cross was coming from. Um, and so for us, whether we push it um, like that spray fade numbers fade or with the speed out concept, um, everything to the other side with the cross and the roll route, um, with the tailback all stay the same. And for us, the way that we read this concept is that we want to get our eyes on the weak safety. Um, that weak safety is going to tell us everything um, that's going to happen with this play. And that's a big part of what we do in the past game between, you know, with our eyes on the weak safety to the free safety to this, to that alley apex player. Because um, really these two players right here are going to tell you everything that you need to know um, for your quarterback as far as key indicators. Um, but specifically in this play, you know, we, we want to get our eyes on that weak safety. And post-snap, um, he's going to tell us where to go with the ball. So like I was saying earlier, you know, we have a simple yes-no here. Um, so whether it's the speed-out concept or, this, uh, or the slot fade with the hitch, you know, basically for us is with that yes-no, can I take the hitch or can I take the speed-out? Um, or if I have the shot, am I taking the shot? If it's gray or if I don't like the matchup, anything else, that becomes a no. And then we get our eyes on the weak safety. Um, now as we read that weak safety, we could still potentially come to, um, say, right here with the slot fade and the hitch. You know, if we were to get something, you know, let's say that he was able to work away, you know, and now we were to get something like this, well, then we would continue to attack that matchup because he works away. Um, he's working back to the cross side. Um, and so for us, we just want to key him 
Whereas most of the time, especially if we put two open receivers into the boundary, we're probably going to get this weak safety moving um, over two vertical. And so now when he moves, now we just work back across where we're looking for that open space right here with the cross to the roll route um, with the back. Um, and we try to keep it as simple as that, where we have our simple yes, no, post snap, read the weak safety, and now we just read it one to two to three. You know, so one thing here, we, we see a little bit of a pressure here. Um, we do have a safety rotating into the boundary. The one thing um, that we tell our quarterbacks is, again, like on that yes, no, just understanding spacing and alignment. Um, so we have a safety rotating in here, but right here, you know, one of the reasons we have this him getting width right here on that slot fade is that for that curl flat player to be able to get to that landmark, um, you know, he's got to fight through that vertical space right here. And so with us, with our quarterback, if he sees the space and feels it, you know, with, with that safety insert, you know, he understands the ball is going out on the perimeter, push it the outside shoulder, we're okay taking the nine yards. You know, so again, it's simple yes, no. Do I have it? Yes. We'll take nine yards and be able to be in a good, good situation. Right. The other thing with this concept too is for us out of a two by this is a this is a empty protection for us, so a five man protection. That's something that we'll get into here just in a few clips. Um, but that's the one thing I, I really feel like as a coordinator and a quarterback coach, you really got to help your guy, your quarterback understand that, you know, like in this situation, you know, we're getting a fifth defender. Um, so, yeah, we can block it. Just odds are is that with all the movement, we've got to make sure to understand where our hot player is going to be, um, which is where, you know, the speed out or the hitch concept. And then with having the tailback um, coming across out into space, just having your quarterback understand exactly where his hot player is when you start to free release the back. Right. So as you begin to look at this, um, one of the things that we've really gotten into um, is push motion in the back um, right here. You know, so a couple things with this one, I think this is great if you start to see teams that, that really try and pressure you. It really declares right now who, who's going to come and who isn't. Um, also, if teams are playing coverage, I think it's just another great indicator for the quarterback to see exactly what type of coverage he's seeing, whether it is zone or man, or like what specifically type of zone it may be. Again, this is just a simple yes, no. Um, and this is purely just based off of quarterback. Again, do I have the matchup? Yes. Complete the ball in the space, right? Now, this is a third and six call, right? Um, and I think a lot of offensive football, we've just got to put our kids in position to make one man miss. Um, and that's a matchup. And that's something that we're just willing to take because, again, tight end makes a miss or whoever that is, right, able to make that person miss, get vertical, and then get a first down. Right. Now, the other thing I would tell you, um, and like I said, I'll show you the good, the bad, and things to improve on. The one thing right here with this cross route, Right, something that we really got into, I wish we could have gotten more into it in the spring, um, is that whenever we feel a defender that he's really going to attach on top of this cross route, is that he really needs to get on his toes and then flatten this route out. Um, and so for us, really what it's going to turn into is, is, is like that deeper in-cut route here. And really the, the cross man turns into an in-cut as well. Um, for us, that's something that you know, we, we really were excited with spring ball to work on. Obviously, we can't. Um, but that would be the answer is that when you get an attached man, if it's not zone, really just being able to flat that out so the quarterback has a way to be able to win that route right here and get that ball in and out of his hands. So now a little different look right here. Um, but like I said, like we're a big, we are an 11 personnel team, but 12 personnel is our next uh, big personnel um, with our tight ends. And so now like we were just trying to find ways to be able to hit this concept um, out of different looks. And so now what we started to do is be able to take that number one receiver, um, be able to put him now on that number stain, on that spray fade, put number two into the flat. Um, and you can still run the same concept now where you're being able to run your cross, be able to read it, have the roll route, 
and now we we flash fake the back um again all that was on the poke fake is is being able to just get defenders eyes move just a little bit but again just being able to hit the same same areas of the field right here and this is just a good way for us to get our tight ends out in space but motion to it to give the quarterback a good indicator of what he was seeing right and now just being able to take advantage or have a heavy set personnel will still be able to potentially push the ball over the top right again same look right but this is a great look here we're now you know now we're able to see that weak safety getting over the top of one right Receiver does a pretty nice job of trying not to cross the center. Um, so that ball is really just snapped on a hash. You can see that as he's working across here, right? Of really trying to allow that ball to come and bring him into that space. Catch and get up the field. Right, again, being able to push motion to back out. Right. So again, we're reading that weak safety. Right. He begins to climb over the top right here, number two on the spray fade. Right. So I think that's probably a little bit better job right here on that stem cross. Just get vertical, try and stay vertical, and then allow the ball to bring it to space right there. Right, so we started to talk about variations. Um, the one thing here, again, just finding different ways to do this, you know, being able to stack receivers, right? So if you get teams that all they want to do is play press man, anything else, this is just a good way to get receivers out in the space, um, allow them to be able to stack, force these defenders just to move a little bit. Um, you know, that was just something that we found that was a good way to be able to, you know, just make them think just a little bit, just as if you would with any, with any other shift or motion. Um, the only difference now is that when we brought, you know, a different receiver right here on the cross route, is that now with a condensed stack look, we would just now expand that roll route. That's all we would do. And you can see with the cross man here as he's beginning to work across, um, he does a really nice job. He recognizes that it's man. Um, and so right here, he's just be able to run away from the man, flatten this out, and work across. Right. Again, push motion. Right. And probably one of the things that people really love about cross, um, I know something for us that we really like, is the fact of, you know, there's so many different defensive looks. Um, you know, whether it's combo coverages, whatever the case may be, there's just a lot of answers within the concept um, that are that are really great right here. So the one thing that as you're looking at here is that now we're starting to see more of a Tampa two look where that Mike's trying to, you know, he's going to push to three, but now with the back getting pushed out, he's able to work vertical on the cross. You know, for us, again, we're reading the weak safety, but it really turns into a one high set. Um, the one thing here is just the fact of, um, now what's going to happen, right, is it turns into that one high set, and now we get to our curl flat beater, you know, and that's and I think that's the one thing is that as you run this concept more and more, is just the fact that you have um, so many answers for your quarterback. When you see post safety look, whatever the case may be, he knows where his answers are going to be at on the field. Again, here's just another example. You know, we start to get more of like a, a true cloud look here, right, where that boundary corner is going to be a true curl flat player. Right, and again, just being able to complete that ball. Um, and the big thing for us is that when we, when we push that ball out on the perimeter like this is that we want to be able to complete it. Again, we push it 12 to 14, and we want to be working flat to negative. Um, we really want to use our body to shield off the defender um, from breaking on the football. 
but now ideally we want it completed outside the hash. Um, it's okay if it's just right on the hash, but we really want it to be outside the hash. You know, and then the last thing, like with us with Cross, is really just having the quarterback understand, you know, where is my hot player? Um, and potentially if I get six, you know, who am I going to get the ball to? You know, and I think not only is that a quarterback, um, uh, quarterback's got to be aware of that, but then also your tailback, you know, right here, the tailback does a nice job just understanding that it, that it is a five-man protection. He's a free-release player, but now if there's an extra player that's coming off of his side that he got to get head around um, to be able to understand that, that the quarterback's going to replace that pressure with getting that ball out into space, and the tailback can see it right here sees the extra pressures coming. So now be able to get his head around. Does a nice job getting up the field, get a first down. So right here, the last thing um, that we're really big on as far as like with our play action game. Um, and again, this is pushing the ball just a little bit more vertical down the field. Um, and this is something I think a lot of teams probably run this concept. Um, just this, the, the simple double post concept. Um, this has been something that's been great for us, um, especially out of heavy personnel sets. Um, and I'll tell you, one of the things is um, with us, you know, we really feel that we were able to throw the ball, that we're able to throw the ball at a high level um, and protect it at an extremely high level. Um, it's just a fact of um, kind of before we get into the concept, um, this protection right here, this is a, this is a potential eight-man protection. Um, and so for us, you know, this is really like we're pushing some type of outside zone fake. Um, we're pushing it off this open end. And now all this protection becomes is that it's a gap protection to the right. Um, and so as you can see right here, this is a this is a 12 personnel set. We're now we're gapping everything to the right. And we use our tailback as well as a, as a stop gap for anything that might be coming off of this edge right here as a free release player. Um, this is a great protection for us and you know kind of talking about it with our like our drive concept and our cross concept everything that we do throw game wise is that we we want to make sure that the protection is sound first before we start to attack coverages concepts starting to get all these ideas everything like that um, it's just really important to us that we're sound protection wise and that if we are going to do anything where kind of like with cross potentially it could be a five man protection is that the quarterback understands exactly where he has to get rid of the football in case that we get extra pressure um, so that we're not taking negative yardage plays. Um, that's the worst thing that can happen to you on offense. And so for us, we just really try to make sure that we're doing everything to limit that as much as possible, because if we feel that we do that, then we have potential um, to make our explosive plays really count. Um, and so for us, with this protection right here, we try to use it a lot of different ways and I'll show you some different ways we do it. Um, one of the main ones for us is just this simple double post concept. Um, we're right here with our number one receiver. We're going to bring him. He's going to work vertical on a big post, push 10 to 12, went inside, um, and then a landmark of 45 yards on the near hash. Um, that's something that I stole just a few years ago. Uh, so you might know uh, Jimmy Laycock, probably one of the greatest pass game guys at William & Mary. Um, you know, that was something that, that he was big on um, when I was studying with him 10, 11 years ago. And I like it just for the fact of, you know, this X receiver has to win the route and get to his landmark. But now the quarterback has confidence that as he makes the read on that front side safety, so whether it's a post safety, it's a two high look safety, whatever the case may be, um, as he reads this and he knows, okay, I've got safety leverage down, post snap, he's come down on two, I have it over the top there's a landmark for that quarterback to feel confident um, that he can get off of the fake rhythm throw. And now he has faith that that X receiver knows um, he knows where the X receiver is going to be. And then that X receiver knows exactly that's where the ball is going to be for him. Um, number two receiver. Now we call it a skinny read where he wants to stem stack, get vertical at that safety. Um, and especially in a two eye safety, he wants to run through the inside shoulder Right, and anticipate any second level throw um, right here from the quarterback. So that potential shot's going to be 18 to 20 yards downfield, a little bit more on a rope, um, but just understanding that if, if, if that defender that over the cap of him 
if he decides to get vertical and fly over the top and help cover number one, there's going to be a seam right here, um, especially off of this action. Right? The tailback now becomes a big part of this because if there is no edge pressure um, right here for him to pick up, then he is automatically just going to release into the flat so that now uh, for the quarterback, and again, this is a little old school, but really this is just, as we read the safety, it's a high, medium, low throw. Um, again, we're thinking protection first, but this is a great way for us to push the ball over the top right here to be able to take advantage and, and really you got to have those shot plays. So again, heavy set personnel, um, X receiver, he wins up top. Number two does a nice job working inside right here on the safety. Um, quarterback, you know, so anytime that we turn our back right here, pre-snap, okay, pre-snap, especially as a quarterback coordinator, like really trying to give these guys, hey, here's here's obviously the picture of weak safety, free safety to the to that alley player, you know, but now we say, hey, pre-snap, I really got to get eyes on this safety that's uh, that's over the top of the double post side, you know, so when I get off of this fake and I set up, now post-snap, right, I should be able to see clear picture exactly what's happening. Um, so he sees post snap, that safety's climbed over the top, taking number two, and now he knows I'm working up over the top right here to my number one receiver. Right? And again, as we give those landmarks, you know, that ball right here snapped on the 40. Um, it's not perfectly on a hash, but it lands at about 45 yards right there where now he knows exactly where that X receiver or that number one receiver is going to be um, right there. And again, this is the, probably the thing that's most underrated right here is just the great action that you get for the second level um, with these linebackers. You know, the other thing too, that's really clean about this is that just the protection right here for the quarterback, you know, so if that safety is not hunkered down right there, he's got an opportunity to get that ball into the flat to still get a positive game. Now, the other thing that I think you can start to do with this, um, again, and these are all just ideas, you can really start to, to condense this formational set. We're now with that double post concept. Now you're really running it more in an expanded look um, right here. So obviously the quarterback does a nice job. He's able to move around just a little bit um, to go make a play. But the thing that's really good about this is that, you know, there's times now where the better defenses you face, they're going to really try and take away that leverage, um, everything that you're trying to create on offense. So one of the things that we really started to do was to really try and get leverage and space right here um, with, our, with our receivers. You know, so like right here, especially into the boundary, you know, we would just run that expanded post, bring number two across, where now most of the time with the defensive back that you're going to get is that there's going to be opportunities for you um, just to win off of the space um, just by the original alignment and leverage that you're creating. The other idea off of this too is just being able to bring receivers in motion um, and trying to do it in a non-traditional way. Um, so a lot of times you might bring it from one side to the other. You know, I think there's merit too, where if you could potentially bring a number one receiver and bring him inside to make him a two, you know, and as you can see right here, you know, we've created space right here for that number, for that number one receiver right here, um, just basically off of that motion. You know, pre-snap, if we were to run the concept, you know, our number one receiver probably not going to have very much space right here to work. And now I think this is just a, another way if you wanted to get to it, maybe to disguise it, or now maybe you can just run that expanded post right here, bring him across, um, and just open up the space just by the simple leverage and alignment that you can create. Again, the other thing with this too, and this is, this is a great team right here that we're playing, but I mean, anytime that you have great defensive linemen, um, really good linebackers, you know, this, this protection right here is a great way to keep the pocket clean for the quarterback but still have an opportunity to push the ball down the field um, right here to take advantage of the space. Again, guys, it was, um, it was great having me on. Um, feel free, guys, if you ever want to reach out. Uh, my information is, is, uh, is on our website um, at shepherd.edu. Um, and, you know, I'd really uh, – anything that you guys have, especially during this time, 
would love to be able to talk ball and everything else. So thank you for your time. Hey, thanks, Coach.